Okay, so we got this little AR robot and he scans the ground with some shader graph effects in Unity, but it's not cool enough. Let's throw in this native plugin so we can talk to it. Start roll. Initializing roll protocol. Now let's give it a brain with a little Node.js, Python, and AIML. Hello? Hi there. Do you drink alcohol? Fluids are not required by computers. But I want them to actually do stuff. So let's add a call to wit.ai for NLP and add the Mapbox SDK. Show me New York City. Loading map. Now I know what you're thinking, but Matt, how am I supposed to watch No Neck Ed? All right, let's make another Node.js script that calls to the YouTube API and then use this PHP script to extract a hard link to the video. Play No Neck Ed on YouTube. Loading YouTube video. I haven't seen or spoken to Rose since last night when I asked her to take the STD test. It's perfect. All right, funny story. So this is my boss, Dave. Dave has terrible ideas. For context, this is my boss getting into an AR sex cage, demoing our flagship product, every single sex toy. And I'm going to load in a bondage case. Now, if you know someone who wants a bondage cage, they're not sure if it fits in with their decor in their room or it has the right space and size, you can put one down and it will come to life there. So when he messages me and says he has a new idea. <sighs> Here we fucking go. Subservient chicken, the fuck is this? Chicken has become a web sensation. If you drive people to a website where they can give a subservient chicken orders in a really kind of seamy living room that looks like a low quality porn film, people are gonna be interested. This will go down. I need you to make an app with a virtual character that you can talk to and order around like a virtual assistant. So you want me to make Siri, but in AR. Listen buddy, I play with cubes in Unity. It sounds to me like you need a million dollars and a team of Google engineers. Matt, probably um, don't say that to your boss. All right, I'll give it a shot. But I'm gonna make a YouTube video about it though. Okay, so I love my boss. He's actually a genius. He's an optometrist by trade and he started a chain of eyeglass stores in Australia that ended up getting acquired by a big company like 10 years ago. Since then, he's been running a digital marketing agency in Australia. He's more successful than I'll ever be, and I think we get along because his ideas are just as crazy as mine. Okay, yep, so what's the, what's the idea? Okay, all right, so check it out. You know those automatic pocket pussies that go back and forth, right? Okay, so we get one of those, and then we have a VR app, right? 360 video, girls on top of you, point of view style, right? She's going at it, okay? We sync the app to the toy via Bluetooth, so her motion matches your motion. Full immersion. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is the exit strategy. Acquired by Pornhub. It can't fail. Can't fail. We're gonna be rich. So anyway, at first I thought this chatbot idea was just another one of his crazy ideas. But I soon realized my boss is like 10 steps ahead of me per usual. So just like websites have live chat, AR apps and VR apps are gonna have these same virtual assistants to help you with tasks and instructions, except they're gonna be much better. The more I think about virtual assistants, the more I wanna make one. As with any new project, we must first make a sacrificial offering to the Stack Overflow gods and pray that all of our errors are indexed by Google. Now we got work to do. So first, we're gonna need some virtual character to move around in AR. Next, we're gonna need speech to text and text to speech so our character can talk to us. For doing specific actions, we're gonna need some type of NLP or natural language processing so we don't have to hard code exact commands. As a fallback, this thing's going to need some type of chatbot brain so it can do general conversation. For the proof of concept, we should add some actual tasks that the character can assist you with. I'm not sure what those are gonna be yet. So since I'm poor, let's find a free character to work with. Okay, this looks good. Let's jump into Unity and get this party started. So I recently learned that no one gives a shit about my projects, and they especially don't care about my projects if they don't look good. And most people absolutely do not care about the code or any technical challenges involved in said projects. The valuable lesson here is that if you have a project that you want people to care about, do not slack on the visuals. Spending a lot of time on a project and then slacking off on its appearance is doing a disservice to all your hard work. So I hate polishing, I hate making effects, and I hate art, but here we are. I wanted an interesting effect when the robot moves, so I made a few holographic looking shaders with Unity's shader graph, and I pulled in the universal render pipeline to leverage the post-processing stack, because I wanted to make things glow with the bloom effect. 
I used a stencil buffer to only render ground planes when viewed through the robot scanner thing, so it looks like robot vision or something. All right, enough with the visuals. Okay, so I sort of cheated here. I did a video a while ago on making an augmented reality web browser where I used Android's native text-to-speech functionality to make a plug-in for Unity. Girls in yoga pants. I remember spending days struggling to make that plugin because I couldn't find any plugins that already existed that didn't bring up the native pop-up box and background the whole app. So of course, after I put that video out, someone in the comments suggested that I just use this free plugin that somebody else already made. So yeah, basically I did a ton of work for absolutely no reason. Story of my life. This guy's plugin does text-to-speech and speech-to-text in Unity on Android and iOS. So I threw it into Unity and I made a build. It works perfectly on Android, start roll, but I cannot seem to get it working on iOS. So digging through some of the issues, it looks like the iOS issue is due to the current version of iOS, and since this is just a little prototype, we're just gonna roll with this for now and make it only for Android. It wouldn't be my style if I didn't slack off somewhere, so I'm okay with it. All right, hold up, hold up. So this does work on iOS now. I did make a tutorial on this on my Works YouTube channel. Check that out if you wanna hear me mumble for 24 minutes. A few projects ago, I pretended to be Tony Stark and we made a Jarvis project on this channel. A bunch of you guys suggested to use wit.ai for NLP, but I didn't listen and I hooked everything up to Amazon Alexa. Well, today I'm listening to you guys and we're gonna use wit.ai. If you don't know what that is, wit.ai is a platform for NLP or natural language processing. So basically you create a project on there and you teach it to extract the user's intent from a stream of speech. So for example, when someone asks, what's the weather tomorrow in Palo Alto, wit.ai will use NLP to extract the intent as a weather forecast, and you get the time and place of the inquiry. So the best part about wit.ai is that it's free for personal and commercial use. And on that note, this video is sponsored by wit.ai. I'm just kidding, it's not. That was a lie. But it fucking should be, because wit.ai is the shit. Anyway, I set up my wit app to extract locations so we can display them with Mapbox, and I made it extract search queries for YouTube videos. So then I made a Node.js script to accept post requests and I hooked it up to my WIT app. Now I can start my HTTP server and send it a stream of text from Postman. This text gets run through WIT and returns me all the information that I need. Right now we can extract specific commands, but we're missing that whole conversational element. If you Google how to make a chatbot, you're bombarded with paid solutions and useless articles. I'm still not sure I made the right decision here, but I found this Node module called Kathy.js. It seemed to do exactly what I want. What language are you programmed in? I was created with AIML. Beautiful. But now, like all good things, it ended up going down while I was working on this project. I tried to contact a developer and I got no answer. So I did some research on how that node module was working because I really liked it. And I found out that it worked based on this open source project called Alice, which uses a bunch of these AIML files or artificial intelligence markup language. They're basically just XML files that have questions and answers. I'm probably explaining this terribly and I'm sure there are better ways of doing this, but I'm a slacker, so here we are. I find this tutorial and it shows you how to use a Python library to load these files into memory and get a response. So now we can fire up our Python script and get a response from a hard-coded value. Sick. Now, if you thought I didn't know what I was doing before, here's where things get really questionable. I'm fairly comfortable with doing C-sharp in Unity because that's where I spend all my time. But when we start getting into using terminal and server-side languages, I become very afraid. Now we got some Node.js and some Python at this point, but we need to be able to put it together. So I do some research and I find out that from Node.js, you can spawn a Python script as a child process. The only issue here is that the script runs till completion and we have this AIML brain thing in Python that takes a few seconds to load before we can query it. So what we really need is to be able to load this Python script once and query the same instance of this process from Node.js. The only way I could find to do this was with socket communication. I'm pretty confident this is wrong, but basically I start the Node server and the Python process at the same time from a bash script and I establish a socket communication between the two. This way I only have to load the brain file once in Python and I can query it from Node.js every time someone makes a request to our chatbot. So back in C-sharp land in Unity, I have this bot data object that has three strings, one for location, one for YouTube, and one for speech. When we get a post request to our Node.js script, we first run the speech through to wit.ai, and if it doesn't match any of our actions from there, we pass it to our chatbot in Python to give some generic response. We load all this info into our bot data object and we convert it to JSON so we can return it to the caller and it can be deserialized in Unity. Hello? 
Hi there. Beautiful. So currently, Wit.ai is returning our YouTube search query, but to actually play that video in Unity, you need a hard link to a video file. We can make another node script that takes our search query and uses the YouTube API to get the first video from that request. We can return that link to the caller, but it's not going to do anything for us because Google sucks and they give us a fake link. So to get the actual hard link of the video, we need to pray to Lord Google that someone has an updated script to do this. Our prayers are answered and I find this YouTube downloader class that someone made in PHP. So let's stop running all this stuff locally and fire up an EC2 instance on AWS. Let's get everything running on there and we can use Tmux to keep all of our processes running. Now, when we make a post request from Unity and wit.ai captures a YouTube request, we can take that YouTube link and send it to our PHP script running on AWS, and that will return us a good link to the video, which we can then play with Unity's video player. A little magic with Unity's shader graph, and it's looking pretty good. Play Matthew Hallberg on YouTube. Loading YouTube video. Alright, so my boss wanted me to make a YouTube video today while well, I'm not prepared at all. Honestly, I really haven't got stuck on anything so far. We're cruising. So yeah, long story short, me and my girlfriend of two years broke up and I went into a depression for like four months and I didn't work on literally anything. But now we're back and I have no fucking clue who wrote this code because it definitely wasn't me. Okay, I guess the last thing we have to do is to get Mapbox working. So wit.ai can catch location intents and return us a string value of that location. A user might say, show me New York City. So we will get back New York in our location field. Back in Unity, we can use C-sharp and Mapbox to do a forward geocode of that string to get back the GPS coordinates of that location. We can then pass those coordinates to Mapbox and load a map tile of that location. We can customize the materials that Mapbox uses to render map tiles and buildings, and I would say that matches the aesthetic of our app pretty nicely. Show me New York City. Loading map. The last thing I added was this little help screen because there are a few commands that are hard coded into the app. So if you say help, this screen will pop up. Help. Loading help screen. You can do a couple different animations that come with the object. You can start and stop at scan animation. And you can also say repeat and then any phrase to have the bot say whatever you want. Repeat, like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> 